Welcome to the Vile Balance HealthCast, episode number 351. 10 myths of exercise programs for people over 35 continued. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Maupin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about hormone replacement therapy for women, which is available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. So in our last podcast, we talked about 10 myths of exercise that that seem to permeate the American psyche. Mm -hmm. We hear it. We don't know where we hear it. We believe it. We espouse it. We say it. Uh, And in some cases, we actually do it, but we do it to our detriment, not to our gain. And we both know people that we think uh, we've seen as patients or clients or just people that we have in our friendship circles that we think have overdone it. And and we have a concern about that because it's not sort of our business to intrude when they're friends, Mm -hmm. but Mm -hmm. we see and we know. And you wanted to talk about... I want to talk about one of my patients who is lovely and... I didn't even know this when she when she first started seeing me. I didn't really realize how much she exercised, even though I asked those questions. Sometimes people don't answer they them lie. if they're in the addictive state. Yeah. They lie. So, um, so she came in. She's fifty six, and she no fifty seven, and she is really skinny, mm-hmm. really tiny, and she's worried about her skin falling off. Her, you know, kind of yeah. not having any tone, and she's worried about. The fact that she doesn't feel good, she's got aches and pains, she hurts all the time. So, you know, some of these things could be testosterone, Mm -hmm. and they are, and they were, but um, like joints, her joint, joint, um, joints had stem cell injections, but they didn't work. So those, those are all signs of either not enough testosterone or over exercise. So I started, um, and in her case, both and in her case. Not, in her case, both. Right. So I then started talking to her about testosterone, and finally she decided to try it, get some hormone replacement and testosterone. And that gave her a relief of many of her symptoms, but she was, she was really upset because she didn't have, she didn't have these muscles. Mm-hmm. And she didn't have that, you know, the, low, the bot, triceps that aren't, Sagging and her skin was still kind of coming off. Well, first of all, it doesn't work fast. It takes some time for all of those things to happen. But second of all, she then told me she's on the treadmill for at least two hours a day, every day. And no wonder her knees are gone. Basically, no cartilage, bone on bone. She needs re- knee replacements because of the exercise. And she's she literally has lost muscle because you... You lose muscle when you exercise, and you gain it the next day. So you're building muscle the following day, but she didn't. She didn't stop that. Mm. She didn't stop every other there day. There was no following day. No following day. So, so she was losing muscle every time she worked out. Mm. And I talked to her. She said she'd try it. She didn't. Somebody else, you know, another medical professional said. You really should stop exercising for a while and let your body recover. Restore itself. Well, one of the problems with with consistent over-exercising, and, and Americans lie to themselves <laughs> about and exercise. And everyone else. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. presumptively. But, I mean, like, we tell ourselves we're going to do this, and we don't do it. Uh, I'm going to start that right after Christmas. You know, I'm going to start that in March uh, so that by swimsuit season I'll, I'll have the body I want to have. And we'll make a pass or two at it, and then life intrudes, and we don't do it consistently. So most of us are lying on the front end of how much do you exercise, how much do you drink, how much do you smoke, how much do you eat. We lie about all that stuff to ourselves and to others. Medical school, they teach us that everybody lies to us about that stuff. That's what House said. Yes. Yeah, everybody lies. Mm -hmm. Uh, but, But the people who do perform and do get into exercise to the addictive level, to the excessive level, they lie about how much they're doing as well. Mm-hmm. And they don't fully, or, or they're not fully forthcoming, especially to medical people about how much they're doing mm-hmm. uh, because they want what they want. They want to get the medical help, 
but they don't want to change the payoff they're getting from the high of exercising. Mm -hmm. And even when it's not a biochemical high, like an endorphin high, there's a satisfaction, a purposeful yeah, high like, of I discipline myself. I and mean, you run into this with some some of the eating disorders, the the power of control over what I eat, no matter what it costs me, gives me a payoff that makes me feel like I'm strong. I and feel like that when I clean out the the pantry. When I clean out the pantry, I feel really good. Huh. It's all cleaned up, and all the cans are lined up, and my obsession, and it's a visible compulsive thing. thing. Gives you a payoff. Yeah, yeah. So it's I know that if I clean out the pantry, I'll well, be happy. Well, if your par your pantry's ever perfect, I I have a number of places you can go <laughs> to feed your. Fish. Yeah, I know. Yeah, fix everybody else's closets. There you go. So. Yeah, but that's that's something that everyone does, not just Americans, but right. everyone does to feel in control, mm -hmm. and and. Exercising but when and they making do it yourself do it to the excessive level. Very often they don't see the damage. They have body distortion, mm -hmm. uh, body image issues. Uh, they distort what they look like. They, I've sat in rooms with with girls with eating disorders, some boys, but mostly girls, who look mm -hmm. in a mirror and describe their self image so much different than everyone else in the world sees them. But they complain about fat here or fat there or overall and they're size. like this big yeah they're they're in trouble mm -hmm. they're in real trouble but there there are women my age i mean there was a lot of anorexia when i was growing up yeah and there are women my age that still see themselves as fat when they're skinny exactly That's and the, the bad point. part about being old yeah <laughs> is when you're really skinny their face is all falling down yeah. and your skin's hanging off Which and is that's part of the issue that this lady was trying to deal with not the anorexia mm -hmm. piece but the the skin and the sag and well, the, the skin was and... hanging because her muscles were going away so when that begins to happen, it's not immediately visible. But what is happening physiologically is their, their body is getting inflamed. And inflammation is mm -hmm. one of the most damaging things that you can have in your body as you age. Uh, it, it's a sign your body's trying to heal itself. And if you mm -hmm. exercise excessively every single day, you don't get that break so that mm -hmm. your body can heal from the teardown damage that you do from the exercise. So, so that's why often people who are who do a lot of running. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm not saying, there's some people who are built for running. So, great. You know, you don't hurt your knees, you don't hurt your hips. But for those people that it hurts and mm -hmm. they're getting joint damage, they can have heart disease just because of the inflammation. Because inflammation is like glue. It takes the cholesterol and the fat in your, in your blood, which everybody has that because it right. has to be transported. Right. So, it takes it and sticks it to the, to the blood vessel. So, it's like gl super glue. So... You don't want to have a lot of inflammation. You want to keep your body from being inflamed. So doing things that you know are going to hurt you are probably a bad choice. That's something you can control. Some of the other things we can't control. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have autoimmune diseases, other things that cause inflammation. Maybe we can't control some of those, but we can control how much we exercise. True. And we don't have to over-exercise. No, unless we've gotten addicted, and then that's an intrusive problem just like any other addiction is so you have to find something to replace it with or you have to find something to to decrease it slowly i've been on a lifelong quest to find healthy addictions as opposed to unhealthy ones i think any of them can become unhealthy is the point that i would make you mean being a workaholic can be unhealthy yes it can darn <laughs> Yes, it can. So what do we recommend? And in the last podcast, you talked about uh, genetic structure and the fact that some people are, have fast twitch muscles and some have slow or long twitch muscles. S slow twitch, fast twitch. Fa fast twitch are sprinters. Slow twitch are long distance runners. Mm -hmm. Some people have both. Yeah. So it just depends. And if you do the 23andMe, they'll tell you what your genetics said, mm -hmm. that if you're half or or whatever, you've got just fast twitch like me, or if you're, uh, I've got a friend who must have all long, um, slow twitch because she can run forever. Mm -hmm. Doesn't bother her. She's built for it, and she's in her 50s. And she's not damaging her knees no, yet? No, she's not. She has, everything's perfect. Huh. Everyone hates her because they're so jealous because she can do all the things that, that other runners who have had to quit because of some kind of joint problem, uh, they've had, to, they just watch her, and she just goes, she's kind of like a gazelle. But her children all go, wait, wait at dinner for her to say something about how much she ran and how many calories she burnt and, and yeah. you know, to look at her kids 
they all go, oh, and how much did you run? And, I mean, they tease her about it because sure. she's always talking about it. Right, right. So it's one of her. But as a so, so those are extreme examples. Uh, but for ordinary people, people, people yeah. like me. Yeah, people like us. What would you recommend as an exercise strategy uh, in terms of frequency, intensity, duration? Uh, I mean, and I know you, and, and we're talking about people that are aging. We're not talking right. about young athletes. So I, so every, everyone should get an hour of aerobic type exercise, even if it's with weights, uh-huh. weights fast and aerobic in between. That type of exercise is called interval training, where you use a bike and then you you lift weights and then you do the stair stepper and then you do something else that has weights involved mm-hmm. that's the best way to lose fat okay. and but you can do something that is aerobic and some kind of weights an hour every other day every I mean, other day that's that's what you need but in between being a couch potato and just sitting there and doing nothing is not acceptable either <laughs> well that's another way we lie to ourselves I, I, before we started that this uh, conversation I was sharing with uh, Dr. Moffin that I, I had a friend that I used to work with who was so proud she was in her mid 50s and she went to see a trainer three days a week and she worked out and she watched her diet and she came from a, a, a culture where there was a lot of obesity in women mm-hmm. and she didn't want to become one of those people so she was really fighting to maintain her body size and her body image and stuff but she was so proud of herself like your friend mm-hmm. at the dinner table constantly talking to all of us about her exercise regimen but then i would get in the car with her and we'd drive somewhere to to a store and she would circle the block like for 10 minutes waiting on a, a spot to open right in front of the store because she wouldn't park in the parking lot and walk 50 yards yeah. to the store so so that's the other part of this the other part of this is in America, we drive everywhere. Yeah. So we need to walk more. We need to walk the stairs more. We need to actually use our bodies more in our daily life mm-hmm. instead of just sitting. So if you're, I mean, it's just not enough to do every other day aerobic combinations with weights, but you have to do something else during the rest of your life. Like if you're going to, if you're going to move things from the top floor down, you're bringing things to throw out or whatever, or to donate, run the stairs, just pile them at the top of the stairs and just keep running up and down the stairs. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's something you can do. You don't it's have to in go your to house. Gym. You don't need to go to the gym or do, or spend four hours in your garden. Like I did this week mm-hmm. and digging, sweating, hauling things, carrying right. rocks, things like that, that that's exercise. Yeah. I was really sweating yeah. and I was really hungry when it was over, but that's, that's exercise. So too. is that a goal to, to break a sweat? Is it a goal to get your heartbeat up to a certain uh, level? I mean, well, how, if you're going to exercise an hour every other day mm-hmm. and you're going to do interval training of some kind, you the easiest one, thing one to be remember is if you're over 130, Extra, your heart rate's over 130 mm-hmm. for 20 minutes or more, then you've... You gain the benefit. You gain the benefit. Okay. Now, I'm not saying you stop at 20 minutes, but... So, my wife and I do a lot of walking. Yeah, you guys walk a lot. She claims that I just saunter. I don't think you mm-hmm. saunter. She just walks really fast. I can barely keep up with her. I... And I walk really fast. I'm the fast twitch muscle, remember? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so that's So, that's something you have to think about. You could alternate weights with pure aerobics that's fine too but but some type of meta- metabolic stimulation every other day lasts for between 48 and 72 hours depending on who you read in terms of burning more calories so you kick your your body into overdrive to burn more calories if you do that hour of having your heart rate above 130 which I do I can with Weights. Right. I mean, I can do that even when I'm doing weights. So, so for people that we, we're talking about, people over forty, mm-hmm. over thirty-five, uh, in every generation, would you recommend body sculpting with some kind of weights or muscle building? Well, if you want to lose fat, if really your main goal is to lose fat, then more exercise, more aerobic exercise is necessary mm-hmm. than weightlifting. But if you have lost most of your body fat, but you don't have your muscles in the right place, 
sculpting is a bad word in way in uh, the gym kind of people, but it really is sculpting. You choose certain exercises. Like if I want bigger shoulders, I do certain exercises for my deltoids. But if I want a thinner waist, I do lots of lat exercises where you're on the you're leaned over and you're kind of like pulling yourself up with these smaller muscles in your abdomen. You know, you have to have a trainer to help you figure out the anatomy of this. Right. But sculpting has to do with I'm going to get the weight, use the weights and the exercise on zones. certain things. Like I don't want to have fat here, so I'm going to do lunges. Okay. You know, that type of thing I say to my trainer, hey, I hate this. So he goes, oh, we're going to do all these lunges and then I can't walk anymore. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I mean, you know, it's not that bad. But mm -hmm. when you start doing doing an exercise specifically in one, for one or two muscle groups, that's more intense. So it sometimes does ache afterwards, but it's not necessarily inflamed. So, so exercise programs must be a lot like diet programs. Uh, because you have to do every other day, you have to do consistently, mm -hmm. you have to do for an hour, you have to do mm -hmm. all these things that you're saying, get your heart beat up to 130. Mm -hmm. uh, when I start, to, when I was learning to about diets, mm -hmm. I would go on diet and I wouldn't eat breakfast, I wouldn't eat lunch, I'd go home and get on the scale and I'd say, damn, these diets aren't working for me and then I'd eat whatever I wanted to eat. I've been, uh, I've been going to the same gym yeah. that you go to, that we go to. Right. Um, since my daughter was two, so 29 years, you know, that's consistent. Well, <laughs> I, you don't have to go to the same gym, but you have to no, do the no, same program. No, no, but you have to workout. do the program. But, but realistically, if I were to start, uh, I mean, I don't even like the concept diet. I don't like to talk about no, it's diets. An what, eating I, program. what I talk to people is you have to change your relationship with food mm -hmm. and you have to change the way that you experience and consume food. Mm -hmm. So if you're not eating to fill a void in your emotional life. You're not eating to feed some kind of addiction like a sugar craving. Mm -hmm. You're not eating That's tough. because you, you're you proving how much you can eat. You know, I can eat five of those hamburgers. Or you're proving that your, hus your husband or wife still loves you even though you're fat. Ex yeah. Whatever. Yeah. There, there are so There's many all kinds of reasons, reasons people to eat, eat the way they eat. So, mm -hmm. so the same thing is true for exercise. And to, to change... You have to change. It for, if you're going to start an exercise program, you really need to do it consistently for about three months mm -hmm. to habituate it. Yeah. To lock so it in. So that you're kind of as, as a change in your mindset and the way you think about exercising. You don't resent it as much. Uh, it becomes a, a scheduled thing, a known mm -hmm. thing, an expected thing that you have yourself do. But also then the overage, the over-under, are these things that you're talking about walk up the stairs and, and mm -hmm. two or three times don't just go once mm -hmm. uh, park your car out in the parking lot and walk into the store and walk mm -hmm. back or don't even take your car to the store and walk mm -hmm. walk to church walk to uh, wherever if, if, if you can mm -hmm. if, it, if it's walkable uh, but we you know, take the stairs in a building instead of the elevator mm -hmm. or the escalator uh, when you go to the airport don't ride the people mover walk the, the hall. Mm -hmm. uh, there are things that you can do that you should do that you ought to automate. That don't take any more time. I mean, you're still doing Not your life, but more. you're, yeah. you're, they don't take significant time except for that one hour every other day when you're working out. Now you could work out two hours and do aerobics for an hour and do weights for an hour. That's right. fine. It's a different type of exercise, but, but, but more than that is probably after, after your 35, even if you have testosterone, is probably overdoing it. Right. So you want to find that balance point. You want to do enough that you stay active and alert and functional, but you're looking for balance. Uh, you don't want to become sedentary. You don't want to become puffed and, and uh, slack, the whole skin tone issue. Right. Uh, and it does mix with diet, and it does mix with the mental truths that you tell yourself about who you want to be and who you think you are and, and the image that you want to communicate to the world. Uh, America is a culture that is permeated by specialized marketing and they try to sell us all kinds of stuff mm -hmm. that we don't necessarily need or don't beneficially experience. Uh, and we buy into that. And what Dr. Moffman is talking about is trying to find a, a rhythm so that you do the things that keep you healthy. The whole, the whole goal here is to have a healthy heart and a healthy body as you age because the, the illnesses, the opportunistic illnesses of aging are just waiting for you to make a mistake. 
right. and to compound and intensify the destruction and the deterioration of your body. So you have to fight back. You have to fight back intelligently and purposefully, but not to reach an externalized goal that somebody sold you, to reach a goal of quality of experience and satisfaction with yourself and your health. I agree with that, and I think you should make sure you have enough protein in your diet. A lot of people think that, you know. Well, they tell us at the gym, for, when for you muscles, finish you this hard protein. workout, drink a protein drink. Because I forgot minutes. to really mention that, right. and I don't want to leave that out because many of my patients don't eat enough protein, and they want to know why their muscles aren't bigger. You need more protein. You need to feed your muscles. I was watching a survival show uh, with my son on television last night. They were out in the jungle, and they were eating worms, and the guy was saying that, Worms are 82% protein, I would and that one bet. worm brings you as much protein as one egg. Well, how nice, <laughs> <laughs> because I'm not switching from eggs. <laughs> well, but there, you know, there's nothing like there a good are egg. people now that are growing worms and uh, Holy moly, you're turning kidding. them into flour and selling flour to make products that are Next mostly protein. Next, it'll be cockroaches. I mean, really, well, yeah. The there, worms, there we need worms in the ground to. To help us aerate. Your cultural <laughs> biases may be showing. Anyway, thank you so much for listening. They're always showing. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.